thank you all so much for joining me and learning how to make pasties and <laughs> hi everyone my name is Kim Chaos. I am a burlesque performer and costumier based in Glasgow. And today, with the help of the amazing folk at Crystal Parade, I will be showing you how to make your very own beautiful pasties and nipple tassels. So, what do you need to make your pasties? Not a huge amount. First off, you're going to need your base layer. This is the layer that goes directly onto your skin. And for that, I recommend Leatherette. I have mine with my logo on it, but this is just plain old full leather. It's nice and soft against the skin. It reacts well to tape or spirit gum. So this is just perfect for that bottom layer of your pasty. So this is layer one. Layer two is buckram. If you haven't heard of or worked with this before, it's usually used to make hats and helmets and it's a stiffening fabric. So think of it as a heavy, heavy interfacing. It is fantastic for creating this conical shape on your pasties. You can see that it's just like a little, whoop, a little slope. So this is what gives your pasties some structure. So we have leatherette, buckram, and then on top we have our chosen fabric. I choose to use a four-way stretch fabric on all pasties just because it means you can cover the pasty without being able to see a seam on the outside which just looks neater overall. So this is red matte lycra, just a little scrap I have from another costume. And it's got four way stretch. This is actually tons. You'll be able to get lots of pasties out of this. And for the other, the hematite pair, this is a little sort of goldy, beigey color. And to be honest, this strip is wide enough. And again, I can get lots and lots out of that. So as long as it has four way stretch, and just about enough to cover the width of your pasty, this will be perfect. So that's what you need in terms of actual materials. The fun part is when you involve <laughs> your crystals. So you can use any crystals you want. I super recommend Crystal Parade. They have a wide variety of stones in stock. They have resin, they have glass, they have Swarovski, they have Preciosa, everything you could possibly want um, from every budget as high to low. So you need your sparkles, of course, to make your sparkly pasties. You also need some fringing if you're going to be making a tassel, which I'll show you later on once we've constructed our pasties. So you'll need some looped fringing. So not the kind that's cut along the bottom. You need to have it looped and usually five to six inches is the right length to get a tassel out of it. So tassels, if you want tassels, you need fringing. You also need some scissors to cut out, something round, around about the size that you would like your finished pasty to be. This is actually the top of a candle and I use this just because it's so easy, it's sturdy, I can draw around it no problem. As you can see, I've drawn around it several times. So you will find something that will become just as faithful for you as this one has for me. You will also need some glue to glue your pasty together. I use Yoohoo Universal Glue. I swear by this stuff. Unfortunately, it is stinky as all heck. It smells so bad, but it does the trick and it dries really fast too. You can get this in most pound shops. It is readily available. So this yellow Yoohoo Universal Glue is my favorite. But if you have a fabric glue that you've used, tried and tested, use that, it will be no problem. But this is my personal favorite. You will also need some rhinestone glue. I use the E6000 Plus, which is non-toxic, but because the nozzle is a little bit wide, I decant it into this little syringe just to get a little bit more precision. As you can see there, that is a precise little nozzle in there so I can get in with the small stones. So if you're going to be using E6000, I do recommend getting a syringe just to save you getting glue everywhere. <laughs> And the last thing we're going to need is like something to hold two layers of fabric together. I use these quilting clips. I think they're so handy. You can get them really, really cheap from the likes of Amazon and any sort of haberdashery. So these are great. In lieu of them, you can use clothes pegs. Everyone has clothes pegs. And that's just for the intermediate step 
of forming your pasty into the cone. So we have all our materials. Let's do it. So you can see I have my leatherette and I am just drawing around my template with a Sharpie. And that's one done. And the same again, so that we have two, and that's two done. Now, time to do the exact same steps on the buckram. Just draw around the template with your Sharpie. So you'll end up with four circles in total. Now it's time to cut them out. Snip, snip. And just cut around with fabric scissors. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of a struggle here. No one's perfect. <laughs> and just snip round. Snip, 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 snip. And just keep chopping until we have our four layers all together. And that's our two buckram. And now just the same with the leatherette. Snip, 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 snip. Whee! Now we have our two leatherette and our two buckram. Time to get the Yoohoo back out again and apply a liberal amount onto the leatherette. Now don't worry about using too much here because this is the inner layer and no one's gonna see it. And just pop your buckram circle on top. Pat, 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 pat. Get that nice and smooth around those edges. And then just repeat the same step on your second leatherette and buckram circles. Lots of glue, buckram on top, and get those edges nice and glued down. Alrighty, so now we have our buckram and our leatherette attached and bonded. Give that, um, I'd say about half an hour to dry at least. If you can wait an hour, that will be perfect and then it'll be perfectly cured and you're not gonna gum up your scissors when you go in for this next step. So now we need to make this pasty pointy. That's so hard to say, pasty pointy. So what you want to do initially is identify your midway point on your pasty. So for me, I like to do that by folding it in half, sort of pressing it in just to give yourself a little guide and then seeing where that halfway point is, which for me is about here. You can see how I folded it. So at that point, because you folded it, you will have a small crease. And what to do is this is the part where you need to be really brave and just cut up that line that you've created. So, ah, it did it. <laughs> so you can see now that I have a little, <laughs> looks like little running legs. Um, so at this point, you can just fold that over and then you've got a perfectly pointed pasty, but you do have a little bit of bulk at that point there, can you see? So what I like to do is I like to pick a point a couple of centimetres away and cut away. It's quite hard to show you on the camera, but I'm going to try. So you can see there, and I'm just going to cut almost a little triangle out. So now, when you fold it over to create the pasty, you have much less of a seam or a bulk. So you do that with one, you do that with the other. It's much easier to do it with your second one because you can just place it over like so and copy what you've just done on the other one. So we just chop that away, almost like a little pizza slice. That's the way to think about it. You're cutting out a little pizza slice and then you're left with two little walking guys. So now what we want to do is we want to attach these edges together and that's where your little quilting clips or clothes pegs, even curvy grips will work. Curvy grips are fine as long as they are uncoated, if that makes sense. I've had a few disasters where I've used curvy grips and the finish has come off onto the pasty. Uh, because this buckram is white, obviously it will take up any color that you use. So be careful with that. So now we're going to get our good old Yoohoo out again. And we're just going to add some glue just from the center point down. You can be quite generous because remember we're covering this up so it doesn't matter if you get a couple of messy little glue bits. 
then at that point, you just want to fold these edges over. Try and catch that with your thumb. This is all sort of fingers and thumbs here. So <laughs> if you're anything like me and a bit clumsy, this does take some getting used to. You get your clip or your peg and you just clamp those two edges together. You can see what I've done there. Clamp and now we have a little conical pasty. Uh, we will keep this on the other side and I'll show you again so that you can see me get all fingers and thumbsy. And just a little bit of glue down. Have our quilting clip ready. Fold that over. Catch it with the thumb. And then clamp it in place. And now all we need to do is just wait for these little guys to dry. So. Now our next step is to cover up those naked pasties. So out with the Yoohoo again and just cover your pasty in the Yoohoo glue. Nice and covered there. And get your stretch fabric and just pull it and ease it over the pasty and just smooth out any bumps and this is why we use a stretch fabric so that we can get it nice and smooth over and just go around it a few times press it down let the glue do its job so that's our red one done and if you have any little knotty edges just snip them off so that you have a nice smooth round edge now it's time to get the other fabric onto the pasty so once again just going all around the pasty, covering it in glue and just gently stretching the fabric over it. Once again, just smoothing out any little lumps and bumps that you can see and getting it nice and smooth. No little bubbles of fabric. And there we go. Once you've given your glue a little bit of time to dry, it is time to cut around the pasty. And that, I find that easier to do while it's upside down. And you just follow the edge around with your fabric scissors. And very shortly, you will have a fully fledged pasty. Ta-da! And then just do the same with the other color. Obviously you would do the same in the same color if you're making a pair but as I'm showing you a couple of different options, obviously mine are different colors. Just doing the same here, just cutting around the excess fabric and ta-da! After all of that hard work, cutting and gluing and placing everything together, we now have little naked pasties with no embellishments on them. So how do we remedy that? With rhinestones. <laughs> so as you can see this is one I prepared earlier and I'll show you how I did it but this is what we have done with the little beigey sort of colour and we've used some beautiful hematite zodiac crystals on here so we've got some rivolis, some teardrops, SS30 and SS20 there and they just sparkle like crazy in the sunlight. These are beautiful. So as you can see, I have left a little gap in there and that's what a tassel. So these will become spinny pasties. <laughs> and with the little red base, I went for a flame kind of vibe. So these have been made with the Crystal Parade resin crystals. This is a flame mix. So we've got some orange navette and teardrop stones here and we have some red navettes and some citrine navettes they are just beautiful and as you can see i have filled all the crystals in so this one will be worn without tassels the extra stones i've used here are some ss30 preciosa hyacinth and some ss20 sun zodiac crystals just to fill in the middle a little bit and i just love this so much these sparkle beautifully so if you've on a bit of a budget or if you need a ton of stones for a project i can highly highly recommend the crystal parade resin shapes they're just gorgeous um you can sew these on oh, sorry i don't know if you can see with the light um there are little holes on these for these to be sewn on 
Um, with pasties and going through leatherette, it is a lot harder to sew these on, but for other sparkling projects, you can sew or glue these on. That's totally up to you. So we have our beautiful flame pasty with no tassels, or we have our hematite black pasties that will be fitted with tassels. So, cut to a little montage of me stoning these bad boys up. So a little bonus step, I will be showing you how to make your very own tassel out of some looped fringe. This fringe just has a thread at the bottom connecting all the loops, so just pull that out and then you'll be left with the loops. Take any little loose ends and cut them off because they will be very handy later. Just put them to the side. And so we begin the process. What I'm doing here is I'm grabbing each loop and weaving it along one of my fingers. You will 100% get tangled up when you do this, but I promise it's worth it. <laughs> so you just carry on doing that. It does take a little while. And then you carry on until you have one loop left at the end. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm getting tangled. <laughs> it's bound to happen, especially with this long fringe. I recommend you can use anything from five inches and above just to get a good sort of length on the tassel. I'm getting towards the end now. The end is in sight. Last few to go. And then, oh, I'm so close. Just a couple more. <laughs> And we have our last loop. Now what we do with that is we weave that back through every single loop. So you've got a little gap underneath your finger. This is finicky. And there you have it, looped all along one. Now tie a couple of knots just to make sure that's secure. You can see that it's starting to look a lot more like a tassel now. And another couple of knots. You can add as many as you want to lengthen or shorten that top loop. And this is where our little scraggly end comes in handy. So we take this and we just wrap it several times around the top of the tassel, about an inch in, I would say. And then when you've got to the end, just double knot again, just to make sure it's nice and secure. It's looking a lot like a tassel. It's quite long though, so it's time to trim. So just eyeball this to roughly how long you'd like your tassel to be and trim off your excess there. Ta-da! A lovely silky tassel. I think it was about 30 centimetres of the fringing that that took. Now it's time to attach the tassel onto the pasty. So we need to get a little needle and thread, double layered thread with a knot at the bottom. You snip off your excess. What you want to do is go through from the back of the pasty and just do a couple of starting stitches there. Just go through a few times just to get your thread secure. I recommend using a leather hand sewing needle for this because obviously you're sewing through quite a few layers of fabric and it'll just make it a bit easier. You grab the loop of the tassel, thread it through and sew Basically just stabilise the top of the tassel in with quite a few hand stitches. If you end up with a little bit of thread at the back, do not worry whatsoever. And then to finish this off, just wrap your thread around your needle. As you can see, I messed that up there. We'll try that again. <laughs> and then through to the front. Make sure it's nice and secure and snip. We're done! Look at that spin. One more step. <laughs> Get your glue, keep any spare threads away, 
a little dot in at the back just to keep it super secure and then trim off any excess thread. Thank you so much for joining me today and learning how to make pasties and tassels. I have really enjoyed making these and I hope you enjoyed watching me do it as well. So to recap, these beautiful tassels are made from hematite zodiac crystals in various shapes and sizes and this beautiful flame sunfire pasty is made from various teardrop shapes uh, made of resin. Uh, we've got some citrine, siam and orange in there. There's a few preciosa and zodiac crystals in there just to fill in too. And this is what we've got. So Crystal Parade have a huge variety of stones for any budget and they will make your sparkly dreams come true. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and that you learned something today. And I look forward to seeing all of your pasty and tassel creations. No closet is complete without them. <laughs> thank you all so much and stay sparkly.